Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, we begin with your weather. Let's go to meteorologist Kevin Scripper with your weather forecast. Fair skies for us this afternoon. You've probably noticed if you've been outdoors for any length of time, that northwesterly wind, which will continue to gust over 20 miles an hour over the afternoon before eventually lightening up later on this evening. Minus a couple of snow showers wandering through eastern and northern areas. We are dry over the next two to three days. That system you see out in the central plains now moving into the Ohio Valley will mostly pass harmlessly to our south sometime later tomorrow evening. Temperatures this afternoon in the 30s to lower 40s. Bear in mind the wind making it feel a bit chillier than that, adding the extra bite to the air if you're outdoors for any length of time. And then with fair skies, we drift back into the 20s with a lighter wind overnight, only to head back into the 30s to near 40 degrees with a good deal of sunshine around on your Friday. You'll notice the extra clouds still uh, lingering up in the north country and may even do so during the daylight hours Saturday. There is that system passing to our south Friday night. First half of the weekend looking like the better of the two days for traveling and outdoor activities. And then we get into late Saturday night, and that is the next system we'll have to track, and really the only one in your entire seven-day forecast. Looks like it could be a little bit of light snow or a wintry mix very late Saturday night or early Sunday, and then switching to rain showers from south to north during the daylight hours Sunday. Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Kevin Skarupa. And let's take a look at your evening commute and your evening ride home and see what your traffic looks like on our traffic map. And here's a look at the traffic this evening. We're seeing a lot of green and yellow and red and black roadways this evening. A lot of congestion and build up in the Manchester area going up into the Concord area and the Merrimack and Nashua area as well. And then heading towards Durham into Portsmouth area, we're seeing a big stretch of stopped traffic. We'll try to figure out what's happening there as well. And then in the Epping and Raymond area, we are seeing a long line of red right here as well. And then heading down into Massachusetts, into the Lawrence and Methuen area, a lot of red over here as well. Otherwise, your traffic is moving pretty okay on this evening on your ride home. So just take it easy and you'll get to your destination eventually. And now let's begin with your evening news. First up, couple sentenced to prison for stealing from relative. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. The prosecutor said that Karen and Jim Foley preyed on practically the most vulnerable in our society and that a message needs to be sent to deter others. A jury convicted the Foley's of stealing about $90,000 from Jim Foley's sibling, Barbara. Now, uh, they used the money, to, according to the uh, jury, to uh, use both ATM cards and transfers to steal the money. Now, prior to sentencing, Barbara's stepdaughter said her father left the money for Barbara so that she wouldn't have to worry about her future. Now, the funds were supposed to be used to provide for long-term care. Instead, the prosecution said the Foley's spent it on themselves. They wanted KitchenAid mixers. They wanted Emeril Lagasse 10-piece stainless steel sets. Jim wanted to fix up his own hot rods. To know that Barbara lived the last years of her life in jeopardy because Jim and Karen chose to steal that money broke our hearts. 
The prosecution is asking that 69-year-old Jim Foley be sentenced to four to eight years. 62-year-old Karen Foley served two to four years. The defense is asking that all the sentences be suspended, noting that the Foley's have no prior criminal record. A decision is expected any minute. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Flooding forces New Hampshire Christmas tree farm to close on peak weekend. A family-owned Christmas tree farm in Hampton Falls will be closed this weekend because of flooding after recent rainfall. High water levels at the Henry Christmas Tree Farm on Route 88 in Hampton Falls led to the closure, farm owners said. The family said the farm has experienced record flooding and will be closed for what is typically the farm's typical peak weekend for sales. Hundreds of customers typically visit the farm to cut their own tree this time of year, the family said. Owners said the farm has seen 25 inches of rain this fall, including 10 in November alone, the wettest fall in at least 132 years. The farm plans on reopening December 6th and operating on typical Thursday through Sunday schedule through Christmas. And here's a look at that flooding on their Facebook page. Take a look. Look at all that rain in the flooded parking lot. And here's another photo here as well. Merrimack man killed an officer involved shooting Maine AG investigation. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Maine. News investigators from the Attorney General's office are in Old Town right now for what they're calling a possible officer-involved shooting overnight. So here's what we know. Very few details being provided, but Stillwater Avenue closed between Sullivan's Auto and VIP, and it's going to be closed for the foreseeable future, seeing a photo here. All schools in that area are open, and police do tell us there is no danger to the public. Okay, and there you go on that video, and that report. Also, the Maine Attorney General's office is investigating an officer involved shooting in Old Town. Police identified the man killed as Adrian Bunker, 37, of Merrimack, New Hampshire. Duncan warns some customers' data may have been compromised. Let's take a listen to the video. Trouble may be brewing for Duncan Perks members. The coffee chain says that some Duncan Perks accounts may have been compromised. 
Duncan says it's possible that hackers successfully logged into some Perks accounts. If that's true, customer, customer information could be exposed, including names, emails, Perks account information. The company says that it uh, forced effective users to reset their passwords. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this evening. And here's a look at your U.S. stock market. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the red and went down. Your Nasdaq closed in the red and went down. S&P 500 closed in the red and went down. Gold closed flat. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed in the red and went down. Euro slash USD closed in the red and went down. And VIX closed in the green and went up. Dow snaps three-day winning streak on trade worries. Stocks closed lower on Thursday as hopes of trade deal begin struck between U.S. and China demanded. Michael Cohen's admission could put Donald Trump Jr., Orga staff in the cross hairs. The admission by President Donald Trump's longtime personal attorney, Michael Cohen, that he lied to Congress about the Trump Organization plans to build a Trump branded skyscraper in Moscow has brought new security upon the sworn testimony of other Trump associates, including his oldest son. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday night, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night, everyone. Bye.